Hello and welcome to our next YouTube tutorial. In this video we are going to be building a custom CSS radio button. Basically on different websites you might see default radio buttons which I think don't look quite good. So in this video you will be able to learn about how to create modern and cool radio buttons using just HTML and CSS. I expect that you know some basic stuff in those two technologies. Alright so as you see we have here two radio buttons option 1 and option 2, we have green circles and if we click them they will be checked nicely with some fade effect. Ok so that's it what we are going to build. Here in VS Code I have two different files index.html and style.css. Inside HTML document traditionally I have prepared the basic structure of HTML document. We have here two different links, one for Google Fonts and another one for the style.css file. You are able to download those starter files from the link in the description. Alright, let's go ahead and as usually start building HTML markup. I'm going to open a div element, which should be a wrapper for both options. So let's assign to it class name, wrapper. Then open another div element, which will be an option itself. So assign to it class option. So inside the div element we need two elements. The first one is going to be input as the type we need here radio. Besides the type attribute we need two other attributes. First one is going to be an ID. We will use the ID in order to link input and label elements and to create click event. So let's assign to it value check1. Also we need here the name attribute. So the name attribute won't allow us to check several radio buttons simultaneously. Let's assign to it value radio. Next we need a label. As we said we're going to link input and label elements and for that id and for attributes should have the exact same values. In this case we need here check 1. Alright, we're going to have two options so let's duplicate the elements and the only thing that we have to do is to change values for id and for for attributes. Instead of check1 we need check2. Ok that's it about HTML, let's go to style.css file and start writing some CSS. First of all let's create some reset styles, select every element using an asterisk, then set margin and padding as 0. And also we need here box sizing with the value border box. Next I'm going to select wrapper. Let's define its width and height. I'm going to set width as 100%. As for the height, I want the wrapper to take up 100% of the viewport and for that we have to use measurement unit called VH. Ok, I'm going to center content perfectly on the page. For that let's use flexbox. We need display flex. Then in order to center the element horizontally we have to use justify content center. As for vertical centering we need align items center. And finally as you see options are placed side by side horizontally but we have to place them vertically and for that let's change flex direction and make it column. Alright that's it about wrapper. Next I'm going to style an option. So let's select it. First let's define its width and height. I'm going to set width as 400 pixels. As for height let's make it 100 pixels. And also change background color. Use here color light gray, write C, C, C. Next let's create some space around each option using margin. Let's set it as 20 pixels. And also create some space inside box using padding. 20 pixels. Finally I want to place elements vertically in the center. For that let's use again flexbox, write display flex and then align items center. Alright, so that's it about option. After that let's move on and style the label. Select it, write option label. At first let's change the font family. I'm going to use here font called Josephine Slab sans serif, then increase font size, make it 60 pixels 
And lastly, change the type of cursor, make it pointer. Alright, so now it's time to create a custom radio button. For that I'm going to use after and before pseudo elements. The radio button will consist of two parts. We will have an outer circle, which will be created using after pseudo element. As for the inner circle, it should be before pseudo element. So let's go ahead and select after pseudo element, right option, label, after. At first let's make its content empty. Then in order to align the element, let's set its position as absolute. Actually, I'm going to position circle according to an option div element. And in order to do that, we have to assign to it position relative. After that, in order to make element visible, let's define its width and height. I'm going to make both of them 50 pixels. And also create border. Assign to it values 5 pixels, solid. And the color 0, A, A, C, 8, 3. Now the element is visible, it has the shape of a square, and actually we want to transform it into a circle. For that, let's define border radius with a value 50%. Alright, so now it's time to align those circles. Let's define the right position and make it 15%. And finally, create little shadow effect, right box shadow with values 0, 0, 3 pixels, and then use color RGBA, 0, 0, 0, and opacity 0.8. Okay, so that's it about after pseudo element. Now we have to create an inner circle using before pseudo element. Actually, we're going to need similar properties for both circles. So let's go ahead and duplicate this entire code and then make some changes. First of all, let's change after into before. Then get rid of border property and instead of that insert background color and assign to it color 0 AAC83. After that let's change the size of the circle. For that I'm going to decrease width and height. Let's make both of them 40 pixels. And now we have to take care of the position of the element. We have to pass it perfectly in the center inside of the outer circle. So let's define top position and make it 50%. Then use transform, translate Y. I'm using it in order to move an element from its current position a little bit up. So let's insert here minus 50%. And finally, we have to move element a little bit to the left side. For that, let's change the value of the right position. Instead of 15, let's try 17. As you see, it's not quite enough. Let's change it and make 17.5. Okay, now it looks fine. And actually, with styling, we are done. Now we have to make checkbox work. So as we said at the beginning of this lecture, we have to link input and label to create click event. So in general, for users, those circles will work as the radio buttons. I mean, visually, they will represent the radio button. But in fact, behind the scenes, these little inputs will do the main job. Alright, so we have already linked label and input elements using ID and four attributes. And actually, this connection allows us to check the radio button when we click those circles and actually the entire label. So eventually this will let us to create the click event. We're going to hide inner circles by default and then we will display them once we click the label. In other words, once we check the original radio button. Okay, so in order to achieve that I'm going to use one of the pseudo classes called checked which allows us to define different CSS styles when the checkbox is in checked mode. So let's select input element, right option input. Then use pseudo class called checked. Now we have to get access on the inner circle, which is before pseudo element. For that, I'm going to use one of the CSS combinators, which is called general sibling selector, and it's expressed by tilde sign. 
And now we have to select element which we need to manipulate on. In this case, before pseudo element. So write label with before. Now, before we define a style for this element, let's make both circles hidden, assigned to before pseudo element opacity zero. Now, as you see, both circles are hidden by default and on click, we have to display them back. So let's insert here opacity one. So if we click any of the buttons, then they should be checked. All right. So we are almost done. We have just to customize a couple of things. Let's make checking effect smoother using transition, assign to it opacity and the duration 0.4 seconds. Also, I'm going to hide default input elements. So let's select option input and insert here display none. And finally, remove background from option. All right, so as you can see, everything works perfectly. And now you know how to create really nice and modern radio buttons, which are much better than the default ones. Okay, if you like this video, then please thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to our channel and click the bell to get notified on next coming videos. Okay, see you in the next tutorial.